Hi, I'm the Reverend Dr. John C. Dorhauer, General Minister and President of the United Church of Christ. I'm going to take a moment or two to tell you a little bit about who I am and where I've come from. I was actually born in Cahokia, Illinois, where I lived for about the first three years of my life. Um, seven kids in the family, very large, very strict Catholic family. When I was about three, we moved to St. Louis, where I grew up and lived most of my life. Um, my mom and dad worked every job they could to put us through school and to give us everything that we needed. I can remember dad working three jobs at a time. I can remember mom working two or three jobs at a time, in restaurants and other places. John was raised Catholic. His strict Catholic upbringing had a profound effect on him beginning with his very early years. It would set the stage for a lifelong passion for ministry and service. I went to St. Blaise Catholic grade school for eight years from first grade through eighth grade. And I guess I was in about the fifth grade when I heard the Catholic priest give the first talk on vocations. And in that moment, I knew I was called to the priesthood. John would follow this vocation right into Catholic seminary for high school and college before making an important decision that would change the course of his life. After eight years in a Catholic seminary, almost every day asking hard questions about why we believe what we believe and often hearing the answer, John, we've believed this for 2,000 years, who are you to question this? It dawned on me that much of what I was being asked to believe I hadn't yet reconciled with my own faith and that to accept the mantle of ordained leadership into the priesthood would require me to require others to believe what I had not yet come to believe. So after eight years in the seminary, I made a very painful decision um, not to continue and felt like I was giving up my vocation. Wasn't long after that that I met my wife. I didn't know at the time that she would become my wife. John met Mimi at his brother's wedding. The bride was Mimi's best friend. I fell instantly in love with him, actually, when I heard him reading from 1 Corinthians at my best friend's wedding. And I saw this passion in this man that, that I had seen in so very few people. She was Lutheran, and um, as our life unfolded, I ended up joining her Lutheran church. We were married a year after we met, and shortly after we were married, her brother came to me and said, John, just because you're no longer Catholic doesn't mean you're no longer called. That led to another transition. I went back to the seminary. We were in St. Louis. The only seminary compatible with our theology was Eden, and it was there we discovered the United Church of Christ and realized that this is where our faith journey would unfold together. Once John was all settled in at Eden, he and Mimi would embark on another adventure, parenthood. John, our oldest, was born actually as I started seminary. It was June of 85. A year later, between my first and second years at Eden Seminary, Adam was born. We intentionally wanted our two children to be close in age, knowing that we would move a lot in ministry. Their first move was to a small church in a small town, where John was called as pastor. Zion United Church of Christ, Mayview, Missouri, a town of 250 people, 10 miles from a gallon of gas and a loaf of bread. Having grown up in the city, it was quite a sh shock for me and for my family to go into this small town. Um, and yet they were the most kind, loving, compassionate people. And I grew there immensely. Um, many of the foundations that my ministry had been built upon started in that community with those people. With two young sons and serving a church full time, life couldn't get any busier. Or could it? Mimi and I thought we were only going to have two children, but I really wanted a little girl, and so we promised each other we'd try one more time. And Molly was born six months into my first call at Mayview, Missouri. I went from there to a town of 10,000 people in South Central Missouri and served there for about eight years. The town was Lebanon and the church was First Congregational United Church of Christ. About 13 years into my ministry, when we were traveling together on a vacation and returning home, we were hit by a tractor trailer. The accident threw my daughter from the vehicle and put her in a coma for about a month. 
Um, Mimi and I would spend every night of that month in the hospital room with her. And many nights we weren't sure whether or not she would wake up the next morning. She would come out of that experience transformed, as would we. Every day of our life since has been a balance between celebrating the fact that our daughter lived through that and has a full and happy life, and on the other hand, grieving what was stolen from her in the accident. It changed me. Uh, I went back to the local parish. I had been serving a church um, for about five or six years, would stay another year or two after that, but it became apparent that in order to meet our daughter's needs, we were going to have to move her somewhere else. Um, and that was when I took a, uh, a call to St. Louis. We found a school there for her. I had actually made a vow on the day of my ordination not to do new church starts, I'm too much of an introvert, and never to do conference work. I always saw myself as one fighting the bureaucracy and not identifying with it. Um, but there was a call there and I accepted it and I've never looked back and never regretted it. The call in St. Louis was to serve as Associate Conference Minister for the Missouri Mid-South Conference. John held this position for five years before making another move, this one much further from St. Louis, Phoenix. Except that a call to the Southwest Conference where uh, once I got there, I thought this is the place I'm going to retire from. This is heaven. Um, I had spent 20 years in Missouri as a very progressive pastor in not so much a progressive world and culture and thought that that's just the price you pay for being on the edge. Um, and then I went to the Southwest Conference and discovered a people that celebrated the things I was most passionate about and didn't want to leave. But then a call came that I couldn't ignore. I, I fought it for a long time. There were some who were asking me to consider when Joffrey had announced his resignation, uh, becoming the next general minister and president. I didn't see myself in that role. I didn't want to leave the Southwest Conference. Um, but a number of very close friends sat me down and said, this is why we're asking you to do this. And in the end, listening to them, I felt a sense of call that I couldn't ignore. And so I put my name in and rather unexpectedly emerged as the candidate. John became the ninth general minister and president of the United Church of Christ in 2015, and he and Mimi moved to Cleveland to start a new chapter in their lives. John was especially eager to begin living out his vision, hopes, and dreams for the UCC, which he has felt compelled by faith to do all through his ministry. I think his whole life has led him to this place, that God fashioned John to be our president. And I can't think of a better person in this changing time when as the church, you know, is, needs to evolve if we're gonna remain relevant. So what I hope to accomplish is to restore the United Church of Christ to vitality and relevance because its mission matters. He just has such a heart for, for people and doing you know, but I think the gospel calls us to do, you know, to really be a voice for those that have no voice, um, to make a difference socially, and, and to try to, to lift people up. Um, so I see John as really a great example for me, for my children, for the church. If I can be remembered for anything, it will be a commitment, a clear commitment to the mission of the United Church of Christ and helping a denomination in the postmodern age adapt to the changes necessary to maintain its relevance for the sake of its mission.